Good morning. My name is Dr. Katherine Smith. I'll be your moderator for this class session. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, <clears throat> non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word our son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifests in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A mild investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized 
on this chart as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We draw this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consisted of a most holy place, holy place, and court round about. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary aims or constitutional objectives of the Institute and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the power is latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to escapate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit 
eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, slogan, speak the truth. We'll have prayer by Dr. Rodney Hamilton. Our scripture lesson is Ephesians 4, chapter read by Dr. Olivia Dobbins. <coughs> Good morning, Claire. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, I'd like to thank Yashua for bringing, <coughs> bringing us together once again. I know it sounds like the usual prayer, but it is a blessing that we can come together in, in the name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Hallelujah. And no matter what we're going through at the house or in the world, that we know that we, that we come out of Him. So we going whatever it is, we're gonna get on down and come on with and, and worship with the brethren. Mm -hmm. he, he, he saved the form of the nucleus of universal mm -hmm. brotherhood, see. Of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. I just like to thank the Father for uh keeping the brethren in it and staying strong all over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. I'll be reading from uh, the King James Version of the Bible. This is coming from the online Bible Gateway. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Yahweh, one faith, one baptism, one Eloah and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of the Messiah. Wherefore he saith, when he hath ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the sons, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of the Messiah, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of the Messiah, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, by cunning, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even the Messiah, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compassed by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore, and testify in Yahweh 
that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Yahweh through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned of the Messiah. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in the Messiah, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after Yahshua is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth unto his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt conversation proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh, for the Messiah's sake, hath forgiven you. I have read the entire fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Good morning. And I'm truly thankful to Yahweh through his son Yahshua for him allowing me one more time to come to class and um, to see, know, and understand something, you know, about his divine purpose. Because it's like, there's so much going on now to me and everything is just present tense for me now. Uh, to know things, to understand things, to hear uh, what is the truth? What is uh, the things that Yahshua have given unto us? And one of the things that I have learned since being in attendance in one of these classes is how are you going to know something about your creator? And um, a lot of times we go to the doctor and they ask you, you know, what is wrong? Uh, do you have any hurts or ailments or pain? Where is the pain? What kind of symptoms do you have? And all of those things. But uh, what I learned since being in terms of class is that I was ignorant of my Heavenly Father the way He really is and actually exists. And even though I read my Bible and all of that, I still didn't know how to go about finding Him. And what I have come to know is just as a doctor, he knows what your symptoms are, what is going on, and he check out all those things, and then he prescribes something for you. And that's when I say when we were brought into this school, we didn't ha we didn't have to bring in nothing and, and come up with nothing. I'm serious uh, because over there in volume. Two. Dr. Kinley goes on to talk about how he's likened unto a good surgeon. Mm -hmm. Now, if a good surgeon, now I've had surgery. Now, he know 
because he has examined all of the x-rays and looked in it and took you through the what the MR after he's done a whole lot of research on you on your body before he even fooled with it before they put you under that anesthesiologist even got to know certain things mm -hmm. because he can't give you too much right and he can't give you too little but he give you and that scripture was beautiful mm -hmm. according to that measure and that's what he have done in my life. And that's what I look at. So since he has given us that way, this is the song that we sing. And beginning at Moses. And all the prophets. See? And that's where we are. So what we're going to do, be his, his will, we're going to set this thing up and then the next vessels can take it on from there. Let's get um, Luke 24, 25, please. Because we talk about a prescription. We talk about a prescribed way. We talk about something that's going to move you from one state of your existence in your heart and in your mind and elevate you to a whole new state of consciousness. In our, in our textbook, the Holy Spirit talks about... Uh, Elevating your consciousness so you will be able to receive those things mm -hmm. in preparing you. You know, you got to be made ready to receive something. So in order to be made ready to receive something, a preparation has to go on. You know, and what we're looking at is how are we going to get ourselves ready to receive the word of truth from Yahshua the Messiah. Read, please. Then he said unto them, mm -hmm. O fools, mm -hmm. and slow of heart to believe. Now, this is now the third day. And Yahshua, he has appeared unto these. Oh, let's back up some. Let's go to 20. Uh, let's go down to about 13. So we can catch up with this. And then we'll, we'll pick back up. And behold, mm -hmm. two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus. Read, please. Which was from Jerusalem about seven and one half miles. Uh huh. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Well, what had happened? Yahshua had been taken up to Jerusalem. He had been spitefully mistreated. He had been uh, taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. They had um, they had really just really done a, done him up. Yeah. <laughs> and what you have is they beat this man. They beat him, just like you got back here when they was beating, that beaten work. Well, this man, he took those stripes, you see. And after they beat him up, you know, they stripped him down, put a crown of thorns on his head, see, and said, what? You the king of the Jews. So then what you do? They pull off his clothes. People, for some reason or another, we think that this is how he is covered by our sake. He is covered for our sake. But they, when you read over there, in Isaiah the 53rd chapter, they done a number on this body. But what you have is, is that Yahshua had been crucified. Death. He had been placed in Joseph's new tomb. Burial. Mm -hmm. And now this day that we're talking about, it's the third day that the two of them, and we're going to use this chart here, was walking on the road to Emmaus. Read, please. 14. And they talked together of all these things which uh -huh. happened. Right, read. And it came to pass that while they communed together mm -hmm. and reasoned, Yahshua himself drew near uh -huh. and went with them. Read, please. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, what manner of communications? What are manner of communication? Read. Are these that ye have one to another? What are you talking about? Read. As ye walk and are saved. Now see, he had told them all these things, but when you get over there, it said they understood none of these things. They didn't understand when he was telling them Matthew sixteen. Hold that and, and run over there and get Matthew sixteen twenty one. 
uh, very quickly. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time up here. But I do want to share some things with you. We can't cover every point because the clock is always working against us. <laughs> but hopefully we'll, we'll get to some things and share with you. Read, please. From that time forth. Began, From that time forth. Began Yahshua to show unto his disciples. To show unto his disciples, read. How that he must go into Jerusalem. In what manner he must, he must. He didn't say I might pass through Jerusalem. No, he said I must go to Jerusalem, read. And suffer many things. And suffer, suffer many things, read. Of the elders uh -huh. and chief priests uh -huh. and scribes. And you see that old, read please. <laughs> and be killed. And be killed. The ultimate thing is, I'm going to suffer many things, but then I am going to be killed, read. And be raised again. And, and, and be raised again, read. The third day. The third day. Then Peter took him. Now listen, go back over to Luke. Now, he told them, I must do that. Now, why is it that he must do that? Because Matthew 3, 13, Matthew 5, 17, very quickly, and then come back to Luke. Because, see, what the world don't know is that there is something that's going on here. And what they're not looking at, and they can't, if he don't show it to them, is that they really don't know what's going on. But see, Yahshua came into the world for a reason. And everything was set forth for him to do when he got here. See, it wasn't haphazardly of him going to the cross. Right, right. You see, that wasn't a haphazard thing. But all these things had been written of him. And he didn't have any choice. Well, I don't like this one. I'm going to do another one. No, it wasn't like that. Why did he come? Read. Matthew 3 and 13. Uh-huh. Then cometh Joshua from Galilee to Jordan. Uh-huh. Unto John. To be baptized of him. Read. But John forbade him, mm -hmm. saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. Uh-huh. And comest thou to me? Read, please. And Yahshua answering him. And Yahshua answering him. Said unto him, permit it to be so now. Now he said, permit it to be so. I'm giving you permission to do this. Read. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now look, people. This is the whole thing that's going on. Now, if he's fulfilling something, it's evident something had to already been set up, which it had to be what? Instituted. And that's the whole thing that the world don't really understand. So his purpose is, and you can read the other scriptures for yourself because we don't have a lot of time. But what you're looking at is he tells them why he is here. Now when we get over here to Luke, the 24th chapter, and he's talking with these two. He's enjoying himself in their heart and in their mind. And he's talking to them. He said, ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And he said, at beginning at Moses. So you want to know where to begin in your Bible. There's the answer. And Yahshua himself, <coughs> he the one spoken. We didn't do that. He said that. So if you got a problem with how to start and you don't want to, you're not kicking against me or anybody that tell you the truth. You're kicking against the truth himself, Yahshua. Because he told them over there in John 14, 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. So if you want to know something about your creator, he tells them what? And beginning at Moses. And what? And beginning at Moses. Uh-huh. 
And all the prophets. And all the prophets, read. He expounded unto them. He went into great detail, read. In all the scriptures, uh -huh. the things concerning himself. Now he said the scriptures was concerning him. It wasn't about the disciples. It wasn't <laughs> about, uh, it was about him. Right. And to this day, it's still about him. Okay, read. <clears throat> 44. Read, 44. Read, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you uh -huh. while I was yet with you. Now he had spoke these words unto them before his crucifixion. Read. That all things must be fulfilled. Now didn't we have it read over there for you? He said that all things must be fulfilled. Read. Which were written in the law of Moses. So it tells you where to go. So you got the law of Moses, which will be the first five books of your Bible, read. And in the prophets, mm -hmm. and in the Psalms. That will be the next 34 books, and 5 plus 34 equals 39. So he comes, you got Matthews, that's the 4. The 4, 39, 4. So you got a whole volume of that book. He said, lo, I come in the what? In the volume of the book. He says, written to me to do thy will, O Yahweh, right? So we're looking for him back here in beginning at Moses. Read. And in the prophets. Uh-huh. And in the song. Uh-huh. Concerning me. Concerning me. Read. Then open he their understanding. Mm -hmm. That they might understand the scripture. Read, please. And say it unto them. And this is what he said unto them. Thus it is written, uh -huh. and thus it behooved the Messiah to suffer uh -huh. and to rise from the dead the third day. The third day. The third day. So he's letting them know, look, all of this had to happen. So what, in order for us to be obedient to the things that he is saying to us, he said, and beginning at Moses. Okay, well, if you start at Genesis 1 and 1, you're not going to find Moses. <laughs> You're not going to find Moses. So, I mean, that in itself is an eye-opener is that when you say, I'm beginning at the beginning. Evidently, something here not right. You know, it's something wrong because he said beginning at Moses and you said beginning at Genesis 1 and 1. There is a difference. So, what we have to do is, is find Moses so we can begin at Moses. And, when, and you're not going to find the man Moses until you get to Exodus, the second chapter, and guess what? The second verse. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And, that, and that's where Moses, mm -hmm. and that's him. <laughs> you say, well, I, no, no, no. That, that's where you pick him up. That's where he was born if you want to pick up his birth. But what we want to do is we want to share what you want to give you the pointer so you can go in and find them. And then after that, what we want to show you is how that Yahweh took that man Moses unto himself. And when you read it over there in the second chapter, it said when she saw him because during the time that Moses was born, it's got to be a death decree out. A death. Why? Because now look, everything is pointing to him. Everything is pointing to Yahshua. So when he was born, did Herod put a death decree out? You got a death. Okay? Moses' mother made him an ark of bulrushes, dabbed it with slime and with pitch, put that child in that ark, and laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And then this is where Pharaoh's daughter come out. And she sees that ark. She sent a maid to fetch it. And she opens it. And the boy wept. And she has compassion on him. And what you see, even in Moses' birth, he's gone through a death. He's gone through a burial. And he's resurrected up yeah. out of that ark. And he ascends into the household of Pharaoh's daughter. Death. Burial, resurrection, ascension. Who is it talking about? It's talking about Yahshua. So every death, every burial, every resurrection, every ascension, every blood, water, spirit, 40 is talking about Yahshua. You see? So then as time went on, you find that Moses, as he grew up, down here in Pharaoh's daughter's house, but over a period of time, see, when he got grown, <laughs> when out there looking around at his brethren, see, and then he sees one of the Egyptians smiting 
one of his brethren. Now what you going to do? You going to rise up. And he slew that Egyptian, buries him in the sand. There's a death, there's a burial. Goes out the next day. He see the one that he delivered striving among his own brothers. And he said, why, why are you doing this? Here we go. Who made you a prince and a judge over us? You intend to kill me like you killed that Egyptian yesterday? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now it's out the bag. Mm -hmm. So Moses has to flee up out of the land of Egypt. And he comes out here into the land of Midian. So you got a death decree is out on Moses' head. And you'll read how Pharaoh said, now look, go down to Exodus uh, 2 and about, I think it's about 15. Yeah, I think it's 2.15. Read, please. Exodus. 2 and 15. Mm-hmm. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing... So, evidently, he knew. So, there's your proof that Pharaoh did know. Read. He sought to slay Moses. So, now he still got a death decree on his head. That's death, death, bam, bam, bam. See, he left out of there. And Pharaoh done heard about this thing. And now he seeks to slay Moses. So, there's a death on his head. So, Moses, he comes on up out of the land of Egypt. Out here in the land of... Of Midian. Now, when Moses gets out here, now see, time has been going on. So Moses was 40 years old when he left up out of the land of Egypt. And when he came out here in the land of Midian, he's out here, and when he gets out here, he comes to Jethro Ruel and Jethro Ruel's seven daughters. Okay? And what we're, what is so beautiful about this teaching is if you don't know how or you don't know whether you're going at it right, Yahweh has provided us mm -hmm. something to keep us to look mm -hmm. for the It's like, you know, just put little seeds for you to say, well, if he done gone through a death, and he done gone through that burial, or he got blood, well, he got water. Now, Moses left up out there. He didn't just, like, stroll up out there. Moses ran up out there. Mm -hmm. He run up out there. When you be sweating, you know, your life is on the line. So he done blood, death is on his head, water, and the spirit of Elohim is leading him up out of that land of Egypt. And he comes to Jethro Ruel's seven daughters at the well. And they are drawing water. Why he got to come to a well? The pattern calls for water, you see. And then what he does is, is Moses, he intercedes because you have things going on at that well. So Jethro Rael's daughter, they usually got to wait in line and stand back. But that day, it was somebody standing there at the well. And he interceded for them. And they was able to get home early. And they dad won't know what look. The priest, the media, he wanted to know, well, look, why y'all getting home early today? And they said, an Egyptian. Well, where is the man? Bring him, call him that he might eat bread. Everything is going on here. And you have Moses. So Moses is content to dwell uh, out here in the wilderness with Jethro Ruel and his seven daughters. And in the fullness of time, uh, he gives him the poor to wife. And Moses is out here tending his father in the law of sheep. And this is what you have. You know what? Everything is pictorially illustrated mm -hmm. up here. And you can just take your point and find it. <laughs> and just find it. If you don't see it, just keep looking for it. We're talking about a divine vision. Right. And a divine revelation that was brought to us. So there are things up here. If you forget the scripture, you know, mm -hmm. it's up here somewhere. You know, these, that's helping Helping you in the faith. Y'all you have provided a way for you to be helped and, and put everything there that you need. You see? So he's out here tending Jethro Ruel's sheep. And so then what he does is, we are at Exodus the third chapter. Let's get Exodus 3 and 1, please. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, mm -hmm. the priest of Midian. And he led the flock 
to the backside of the desert. Read, please. He came to the mountain of Elohim. Read. Even to Horeb. Read. And the angel of and Yahweh. And the angel of Yahweh. Well, what is the angel of Yahweh, Elohim? That ministering spirit. It said, the angel of Yahweh, Elohim. Read. Appeared unto him in a flame of fire uh -huh. out of the midst of a bush. Read, please. And he looked. And behold, the bush burned with fire, mm -hmm. and the bush was not consumed. Why is it got to be something burning out here? Because the pattern calls for it. You see that seven branch lamp stain? It's got to be something out here <laughs> in this wilderness where Moses is that's lit up. See, read. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. Mm -hmm. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see the great sight, why the bush does not burn. Okay, now, that's the third chapter of Exodus. I want you to go down, because I just want to pick up a few more things, and I'll be down. Go over, go down to the, the uh, tenth verse, please. Come Exodus. now, therefore. He, and he tells Moses, he said, come now. He didn't say go down. He said, come now, therefore, read. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Now, Yahweh Elohim is appearing unto Moses. This is a vision that he is having. You see, read, please. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Uh-huh, read, please. And Moses said unto Elohim, uh -huh. who am I? Mm -hmm. And I should go unto Pharaoh. Read, please. And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Uh-huh. And he said. Now listen, listen. He said. Certainly. Certainly. I will be with thee. I you. will be with thee. He said, come now. And he said, certainly. I will be with thee. Read. And this shall be a token unto thee uh -huh. that I have sent thee. Mm -hmm. When thou hast brought forth the When you have brought forth the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he said, You Moses gonna serve me here at this mountain. Thirteen verse. Read, please. And Moses said unto Elohim, uh -huh. Behold, when I come unto Now look, look here. He said, When I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you. They're going to ask me, what is your name? What am I going to say unto them? And he tells him, and he gives Moses his name, Yahweh. Okay? He said, this is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. He didn't say it just to you for right now. <laughs> he said to all generations. And when you get over there in Psalms 135 and 13, it's going to tell you the self-same thing that's going on right here in Exodus 3, 13 through 15. He gave his name to Moses. Well, people say, well, oh, this is... No, no, no. This was the first time that Yahweh Elohim gave his name to, the, to a man. And why you say that? Exodus 6 and 3 says what? Read, please. Exodus. Six and three. Uh huh. And I appeared unto Abraham. He said, "Now look, when he was talking to Moses at this burning bush in, in Exodus the third chapter, and he talked about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, now he's still having this conversation with Moses. So he tells him what? Read. And I appeared unto Abraham. I appeared unto Abraham. Unto Isaac. Uh huh. And unto Jacob uh -huh. as El Shaddai. As El Shaddai. El Shaddai is not a name." It's a title. El Shaddai means almighty provider. The characteristics, the state of being, what he's doing. What was he doing? He provided for them. You see. Read. But by my name. But by my name. Yahweh. Uh -huh, was I not known I to them. I wasn't known to them. They didn't know my name. So don't you tell me. Oh yeah. This, no, no, no. This is Yahweh speaking to Moses. And he said, by my name, Yahweh, I was not known to them. So when you come down here in the land of Egypt to these children of Israel, then you are coming down with a name. Because Moses said, they going to ask me. And what am I going to tell them? So what you find is when Yahweh Elohim gave Moses that name, then he gave him signs and wonders. He asked Moses, he said, what's that in your hand? He says, a rod. He said, cast it on the ground. 
and the rod became a serpent. He said, pick it up by the tail. And it came a rod in his hand again. You know, I'd have lit out myself. <laughs> you, he been hauling this rod around all that time. And now you say cast it on the ground and it, it becomes a serpent. And then he going to tear it. He said, no, pick it up by the tail. Establishing that faith in right. Moses. In Moses. Mm -hmm. That I will be what I will to be. And I am able and qualified to deliver them children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by a mighty hand. Yeah. And the only thing you got to do is be obedient. But he said, look, the uh, 13th, uh, go down to 3 and 19, Exodus. I want to pick up something there before we go on. And I'm sure that the king Now look, Egypt people. Y'all is, people think that Yahweh didn't know nothing about what. He said, look, he said, I am sure. Sure as positive. I am sure. Y'all sure. I'm sure. Read. And I am sure that the king of Egypt would not let you go. Uh-huh. But by a mighty hand. A mighty hand. Read. And I will stretch out my hand uh -huh. and smite Egypt with all my wonders, uh -huh. which I will do in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. And after that, he will let you go. Uh, now, look, people, if you don't believe that, that Yahweh already know about a situation, so he set up an event and come along and do it. He said, he tell Moses already, he said, I am sure that he will not let you go but by a mighty hand. But I got some for him. So Moses didn't come down here, oh, he, he, he not going to let him go and, and I'm going to be this, that, and all this. He wasn't, he wasn't in fear because Yahweh had made him ready. And he come down, he, he said, now look, he got, he, I want you to come on down here. And I'm going to be down here because look, he said, just come on down to me. <laughs> you know, so then Moses, he comes, he gets ready to come down. He goes to his father-in-law and tell him about him uh, going down into the land of Egypt. And then Moses, he goes, well, what about, he said, look, I already got that taken care of. Your brother Aaron, he speak plain. He on his way out to meet you. No problem. I mean, <laughs> how good can you get? Everything that you need, I told, you know, this one was Last Sunday when he said everything you needed was prepared when you was brought in here in this class. And all these principles just showed me a confirmation. Mm -hmm. It's just confirming that Yahweh has spoken this thing. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll also do it. And that's over there in Isaiah 46 chapter. He said, I have purposed it and I will also do it. So he the one that's purposed it and he's the one that's carrying out everything in any event of anything that's being done, that's him in you, just carrying out his own purpose, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful, you see. So then you have Moses, he comes on, well, we're in the, in, over here in, in the fourth chapter, I want you to go down to, go over to where he's telling him about, I'm going to be with your mouth, is that 4, 5, 14 or 15 or somewhere? Um, four thirteen. Start it. Start there. And he's and he and he said, "Oh Yahweh, sin mm -hmm. I pray thee." Now he says, "Sin I pray thee by the hand of whom you gonna sin." Okay, go up to fourteen. Read. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against. He was kindled against Moses because you you study going on. No, I got this. Only thing you got to do is be obedient. Mm -hmm. Read, please. And he said, uh -huh. it's not Aaron the Levite. Look, no, it's not brother. even the Le Aaron the Levite, your brother. I know he speak plain and well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I made you. I know what you have need of. Right. So don't be going on dragging around trying to find an excuse. Because that's all it is. And I used to tell my kids, I said, excuses first cousin to a lie. I said, excuses first cousin to a lie. Don't be lying to me. You know, make an excuse. You just be obedient. Read, please. And also, behold, mm -hmm. he coming forth to now, meet Now, Aaron been down there all that time. What he doing coming forth to meet Moses? See, Yahweh is running this thing, people. Read. And when he seeth thee. He going to be glad in his heart. Now, he said, I'm going to be with your mouth, and I'm going to be with Aaron's mouth. That's the part I want. 
And thou shalt speak unto him. Uh -huh. And put words in Listen, his mouth. Listen, where he gonna get them words from to put in Aaron's mouth? Because Aaron ain't got nothing. Aaron ain't got nothing. He said, I'm going to be what? And I will be with thy mouth. Uh-huh. And with his mouth. Uh-huh. And will teach you what ye shall do. And I'm going to teach you what you shall do. I'm going to be with your mouth. So when Aaron, when Moses speaks to Aaron, when Yahweh speaks to Moses, Moses speaks to Aaron. You see that? It's the one in the self-same spirit. Read. And he shall be thy spokesman mm -hmm. unto the people. Read, please. He shall be to the the instead of he shall okay. be, he to, gonna be to the of instead of a mouth. Right. But what, what we're looking at is how Yahweh set this thing up and carried it out. So he told Moses when they would come on down here, he said, You go to the elders and tell them, and they all bowed their heads and everything. He said, Then you got to come on, come on down here now. And and what he what he got is is how Yahweh has everything set up for him. So then he comes down here with that name Yahweh. And he and, and Yahweh told Moses what to tell uh what to tell Pharaoh too. He said, You let my son go. You let my son go. And if you don't let my son go, I'm gonna slay your son. I'm gonna kill him. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> I mean, he just told him. He said, now, if this is 422. Is it not in the scripture? This is what Yahweh is speaking to Moses. Read, please. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, uh -huh. thou sayest Yahweh. Now, Moses didn't say, look, this is how I feel about the situation. No. He says, what? Thou sayest Yahweh. Uh -huh. Israel is my son. Israel is my son. Israel is my son. Is real like my son? Yes, it is. Israel is my son. Read. Even my firstborn. My firstborn. Now, what you're picking up? The firstborn, firstborn, first called, you see? As it is in earth, in heaven. Firstborn. Let my son go. And if not, I'm going to slay your son. So you got Moses and Aaron. Coming on down. Get the seventh chapter. Pick that up for me real quickly. Uh, because we want you to know that there is a, a, an operation that's going on here. Read, please. And Yahweh said unto Moses. This is Yahweh speaking to Moses. See, I have made thee. See, I have made thee. Read. And El to uh -huh. Pharaoh. Read. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Okay, you got Moses the great lawgiver. And now you got Aaron the prophet. So what you got? We was talking about the beginning in Moses, the law and the prophet. So what's going to deliver these children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by a mighty hand is the law and the prophet. Because Yahweh is come down to deliver. He said, surely I will be with thee. So you had the children of Israel down here. And I'm cutting it up because I run out of time. But you had Yahweh Elohim that had Moses going back and forth to Pharaoh over and over and over again about letting these children of Israel go. And he set ten devastating plagues upon the land of Egypt. And he went on to say, For in very deed, for this cause, have I raised Pharaoh up. And that's Exodus 6.19. So what you are having is, is Yahweh setting something up, and then he's going to execute a power to cause things to be the way he has said that they would get right back from the beginning. So Moses and Aaron comes down. They have ten devastating plagues. The, the ninth plague uh, is the plague of darkness. And the tenth plague was the plague of the death of the firstborn. So you had really darkness. Like you have, you have dark, darker, darkest. Okay, mm -hmm. so it was very dark because of what he had done down here in the land of Egypt. And he told the children of Israel, before you can leave up out of here, he said, look, we're in Exodus 12th chapter. He said, take out a lamb, mm -hmm. a lamb for a house. You know, and your lamb had to be without spot and without blemish, That's a right. male of the first year. Why he got to be without spot, 
without blemish, a male of the first year. You says all point to Yahshua the Messiah. And this is how you come on down. And then it talks about that virgin going to see and bear a son. And there can't be nothing wrong with it. This lamb can't find no fault at all. He can't be all crooked up, can't have flat feet, can't have a hump in his back, can't have a knot in his tail. He can't have nothing superfluous about him. Just as when he got out here, couldn't have nothing wrong with none of the priests that served. Because all of it was pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Oh. So then he done told them, look. He said, now look. He said, get yourself ready. Yes, he said, look. And them children of Israel, they was down there in the land of Egypt, out in Goshen with that light. And that greater light is Yahshua. And he said, look. He said, have your staff in your hand. Have your loins girded. And have your shoes on your feet. And be ready. Because this is Yahweh's Passover. And he said, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I'm going to smite the firstborn of man and beast in the land of Egypt. He said, but against the children of Israel, he said, ain't even going to dog going to wag his tongue. In other words, you talking about that mighty angel. That, cried, that said, he just come on through there. Yeah. Said that angel of death and <laughs> left his mark on him. You know, we're not that running around yeah. putting stuff here and there. No, because this was it's Yahweh's. Passover, and they had to have that lamb. See how they in their little house? Yes. What's nobody outside. No. They had to have it in the inside. Mm -hmm. And down here now, what? It's that lamb same. got to be where? It's, it's got to be in you. Present tense. So that lamb being in them, they be ready. And then that great cry. And then it said what? Then they come on up out of the land of Egypt. Mm. To and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. Led by this phenomenal cloud. And you get over there in 1 Corinthians. He said, brother, I would not have you to be ignorant. How? That what all of our fathers was in the cloud. And all was baptized in the sea. And they was led by Yahshua. They didn't follow him. He was led by that, the, the spirit that was in that cloud. That represents Yahshua. You see, and that phenomenal cloud, they was looking forward. They weren't looking backwards, trying to, what you said, what you got for me to do? No, no, no. They was looking unto him. Mm -hmm. And then the more they get out here, he said, look, stand still mm -hmm. and see the salvation of Yahweh. He left the land of Egypt devastated. Mm -hmm. And people want to say, well, old Pharaoh, he went on back. No, no, no. <laughs> you better read the 15th chapter. <laughs> you better read the 15th chapter. Of Exodus and go over there in the book of Psalms 105 and 106. You tell you, look, he killed him. Oh. oh, it wasn't no going back and all that. So you saying he brought about that lamb had to be in them. It had to be the inside of their houses. Blood on the upper limb, two side posts, dipping from a basin, four points of blood. Why? It's got to be four points of blood with Yahshua. Got to be four points of blood. Everything got to be what? According to the scripture. Mm -hmm. How he set it up and how he come in and fulfill it. And then that old adversary, and Peter said, oh, now that won't happen to you. He no, said, get me back. <coughs> You know, that ain't going to happen to you. Look, I, I purposed it, and I will also do it. And you cannot get, get out of my way. You know, all of this. And he brought them up out because of what they was obedient. <laughs> I took them on out here to and through the valley towards the Red Sea. You had a death. You had them buried. And they resurrected out here in the wilderness of Sinai. And they was out here for how long? Forty years. Forty years, Yahweh said, your shoes didn't wear out. Mm -hmm. Your clothes didn't wear out. Mm -hmm. I fed you. Yes. Forty years. Mm -hmm. All that time, they didn't go hungry or nothing. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But then he said, because of your unbelief, he killed them off. Killed off all them old heads. And then you had three going on over the Father, Word, and the Holy Spirit. You see that? Mm -hmm. All of it was talking about Yahshua. I do hope that something has been said that would just edify the body. I'm thankful to Yahshua that he gave me to speak and that every word that mm. Yahshua accepted in the name, in his name, and that someone gets something from this That's testimony. Right. And with those words, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. My next speaker will be Dr. Dr. Olivia Dr. Come on down. <laughs> 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 the price is right. No the price is Always. right. Come on down. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yes, uh, and, and, and Yahweh just, just, you know, 
when you when you preach, I said about that song. When you mm. when you sing that song, mm. Yahweh kick that gear back, <laughs> <laughs> and you come on with it. Uh, uh, that gospel, you That's know, right. and we can joke about it. Sometimes we be making light about it, you know, and, and because see, the children of Israel it says in Corinthians that they are examples that we yeah. should do right. the same thing. Right. 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 So what did they do? They got up there talking about, oh, that loathsome, that mass. See, it was, it was mystifying to them at first. Uh -huh. Then after a while, we just loathed that old mass. <laughs> See, the gospel of Yahshua the mm -hmm. Messiah, it, it, it has the, uh, the power. Mm -hmm. Now, for the sake of time, the vessel, because see, that's what we were taught. Pull, pulling the train, the baton right. has been passed. Right. Mm -hmm. Now the vessel has gone through. I just need to uh, uh, back up because this is the way I want to do it. Go, go back and be one scripture. Give me John five thirty nine. Mm -hmm. The vessel has already gone through Luke twenty four twenty five. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to go back here to Exodus because he said beginning at Moses. Mm -hmm. Read. You search the scriptures. Now, uh, this is the Savior talking. Down here we had to find out who's talking, who is he talking to, and get some sort of reference point in time. So it's Yahshua the Messiah speaking to the Jews. When you read in uh, the first chapter of John, it'll tell you, he came, and the word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. And also say he came unto his own. own. He did, see that, we used to joke with that. Mm -hmm. If the word was a Bible, he would have been in the library. Because that's where his own would have been yeah, among all the books. But when the word came, who did he come to? He came to the Jews, to the Hebrews, and he spoke to them. So here he is, Yahshua, speaking to his his brethren or the Hebrews. He says, What? Ye search. Ye search the scriptures. Now we went through that, how that that's not a a, a, a directive like, okay, when you get home now, mm -hmm. go 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 do this. Mm -hmm. That um you are doing it. Mm -hmm. I declare that you're doing it. You mm -hmm. gotta search it if you got it rolled up on your forehead <laughs> in the <laughs> phylacteries <laughs> and it's in the hem of your garment and it's up <laughs> over the <laughs> doorpost right. in your houses. You searching it, right. <laughs> but it's to no avail. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. In them, here's it is. You think you have eternal mm -hmm. life. That's why in Isaiah he says, "Your thoughts, uh, not, 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 not thoughts. my thoughts." Mm -hmm. And also uh, over there, when Yahshua was walking, he said, "Think not, <laughs> the Messiah." <laughs> See, they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Read. And they are they which testify of me. They testify of me. So where we went back through and the vessel showed how that the scriptures, what are the scriptures? That is the, uh, what we call in the world, the Old Testament. Right. From Genesis over to Malachi. That's what is deemed as scriptures. And the Savior says, it testifies of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I need you to get, it's, it's uh, Peter. One of the Peters has said that it, that it testified aforehand mm -hmm. the suffering of the Messiah. It's either, it's either in 1 Peter or it's either 2 Peter. Um, if it's one of them, it's, it's 1 and 22. 1 and 22 says, Seeing ye have purified your souls. No. Not that one. No, then it must be 2 Peter. 2 the prophecy. No. You also are his lively souls. You are a chosen generation of royal priests. I'm Bush. What's the word say? <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Oh, okay. Second Peter, where are we? Where about our giving? Uh, of first us Peter two. one and eleven. For so an entrance. First Peter. First Peter one and eleven. Oh, first Peter. Searching Sir, oh. what or what okay. manner? Let's go. Let's go up one because we get some kind of continuity. Okay. First Peter one and one. No, no, just one, just one, one Ten. verse. Uh huh. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired. Wait a minute, now the prophets. So 
uh, who we would call the prophets from Joshua on down to Malachi, read, they did what? The prophets have inquired and searched diligently, searched diligently, who mm -hmm. prophesied mm -hmm. of the grace that should come unto you. Oh, you mean the things that they were talking about? Mm -hmm. Now, the vessel was saying how that Isaiah says a virgin shall conceive. You know, the uh, other other prophets, uh, uh, we can go in and talk about he shall, he shall come in riding upon a donkey. Mm -hmm. You know, that that was all. What are they doing? They're saying these things. That's right. And they are talking about what Yahshua the Messiah is going to do, the mm -hmm. Savior is going to do when he comes in. I keep thinking about... Uh, 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 Gladys Knight singing, If Anyone Should Ever Write My Life Story. Well, look. Wasn't nobody that I can bet you. Wasn't nobody even there when little Gladys was born, starting to write. No. Okay, they weren't. It wasn't until she was Gladys Knight and the Pips that somebody, and then had to, had to rise up because she had been Gladys Knight and the Pips for years before the world discovered her. Right. Then once you at that Zeta, now somebody wants to do what? Right. Go back. Right After the fact, yeah, mm -hmm. and write your life story, and you know that, that that is that is some of the problems and some of the issues because they that um, you in writing creative licensing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and how that sometimes we we embellish it. Sometimes mm -hmm. I thought about that thing on Saturday Night Live, and the guy was saying, "I was born in the house that my father built," you know, <laughs> they, to to. To make it sound like so much, you know, and you was rich when you was born, you know, <laughs> like like that rap, that rap, that rap star was it Vanilla Ice or whatever mm -hmm. he was, and he wasn't even from the ghetto. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Your life story will catch up on you. Yeah. Yahshua the Messiah story was written starting at day one. <laughs> What he must do. That's why the, the steps of a righteous man are ordered. Mm -hmm. Everything he did was already ordered, mm -hmm. already written, already prophesied. Mm -hmm. He's coming in. I just uh, um, in, in stage production and in, in TV, real TV production. You have marks and stuff you have to hit. You, you know when you. Uh, I was I was looking at something from Westworld, and I and it was like showing behind the scenes. And these people, they were talking to each other face to face. And there were some tracks on the floor. And I'm thinking, well, that's funny because they got to be careful when they turn around to move that somebody don't step off up into there. Because it was high as a railroad track. You know, step off in there and fall down. And I'm thinking, what in the heck is this in the floor? Well, just kept on watching the scene. And then it showed, it showed them with that camera, and it was on a track so oh. it could be smooth, and it rolled up there to get another shot. Mm -hmm. So that means that everything is blocked, it's marked off, and when you hit your, and they said when you hit your mark, mm -hmm. that's when you take your cue and you say your part. Mm -hmm. So Yahshua the Messiah, everything he did, he was hitting the mark, mm -hmm. got his cue, and said what he was supposed to say. <laughs> wasn't nothing. I, wasn't no ad lib. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Uh, uh. There was. They were talking about that in Game of Thrones and some and some other. I think even in Westworld, they were saying that those scripts are too complicated. There is no ad lib. Because see, some movies they'll say, oh yeah, I liked the way you did that part. We'll leave that in. Mm -hmm. We'll leave. No, there that, that wasn't none of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they cut you off right. Go ahead. Cut. <laughs> Give it just like your it horror. is written. Right. Just <laughs> like it is written. So Yahshua mm -hmm. the Messiah wasn't ad libbing. He wasn't faking. Mm -hmm. Everything was already, as the vessel say, prescribed. Mm -hmm. Read. <laughs> Searching what? Uh huh. Or what manner of the of time uh -huh. the spirit of the Messiah which was in them. Well, we never knew that the spirit of the Messiah could be operating before he manifests through the loins of the Virgin Mary. We, we did not understand that. But we had to come in here and be taught that that is the eternal spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit in or out of a physical body. And that's he was prophesying. Himself, mm -hmm. of himself, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he would manifest through Mary. Read. 
certain what or what manner of time the spirit of Yahshua, which was in them, mm -hmm. did signify. Did signify. When it testified beforehand. How many times is it going to tell you before? <laughs> Before, 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 and the read. suffering of Yahshua and the glory that should follow. D -d Does that sound like Luke 24, 25? Ought not the Messiah mm -hmm. to have suffered these things what, and mm -hmm. enter into his, his glory? glory right. So look, you didn't understand. That's why he said, and then he was the beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Why? Because they had already testified the suffering of the Messiah mm -hmm. and him entering into his glory. Okay, now, when they get out here into the wilderness of Sinai, and the vessel has gone through, they've been mm -hmm. delivered out of here, mm -hmm. and they have been thrust out. Now, this is how I first saw it. I didn't know anything about the right. Bible. They could have told me anything. Jackrabbit was in the Bible. <laughs> I did not know. But when they showed me the Bible by the pattern, that was it. That was, you talking about gone hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. I said, this is it. Mm -hmm. The Bible is divinely inspired, and this tabernacle pattern mm. is the key to yeah. understand yeah. what is happening. Wow. The vessel has gone through and showed how that they had to be down here. There was all of those death, burial, resurrection, mm -hmm. death, burial, resurrection. And then what do we have? The last one, when mm -hmm. they go, and I keep thinking, it's, they're going to be, Thrust out. Yes. And see, they have uh, they have a, a a show called Call the Midwife. <laughs> yeah. And they, it's in England, and they go around, and they're midwives, mm -hmm. and they they encourage the women if mm -hmm. possible. And you know what's fascinating? I've been watching it for a while, and they be calling out the years, and they're saying in the 1950s, in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So they were midwifing in the in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were suggesting home delivery right. when possible. Right. And then, now because it's on PBS, they, mm -hmm. you know, but they, <laughs> they had a camera at some kind of angle. And if it don't go by the pattern, the, mm. the woman will, will have the busting of the water bags. See, blood water. Mm -hmm. Busting mm -hmm. of the water bags. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they'll say, ooh, who, who, they'll either have, you know, somebody there yeah. with them. Once those right. pains started, they'll say, call, that's what the name of the show is, call the midwife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll call the midwife. They got their delivery bags, and mm -hmm. here they come on their bicycles. You know, and they'll mm -hmm. have their feet all up. And then we figure that the water's gone. But, oh, no, the water ain't mm -hmm. gone. Because when they, when they mimic that birth, that birth, mm -hmm. More water and blood shoot out. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got blood and water. Mm -hmm. The child, you know, some of them, there's a difficult, especially when they're talking about they breached or they arm in the wrong, or they yeah. they arm and got up by the head. They had the woman got to just, just stand there almost and, and let the weight of the of the baby pull it out. Mm. They just don't leave it down there. They And they wipe the baby off, get the baby cleaned up, suction his mouth and do what? Give it back to the parent. Oh, no, I missed a step. Uh, in in those live births like that, with no uh, uh, drugging, mm -hmm. those babies sometimes they'll draw their breath they self. Yeah, they're lively. <laughs> yeah, they're lively. Mm -hmm. See, it was when our parents' generation, mm -hmm. they they knocked them out, <laughs> knocked them out, knocked them out, yeah. and the baby was drugged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it wow. had to be kind of quick and with a yeah. slap. Yeah. But the point is whether they had to tappy little feet or as soon as he gets himself together and they start you yeah, start rubbing him oh this it's a yell you know oh, this is a different kind of environment yeah. and the spirit or the air enters into him blood water spirit mm -hmm. we see it all the time mm -hmm. all the time so they got a, a blood down here mm -hmm. they've got to according to the pattern they've got to come to some water right. now how is it talking about a pattern because we got uh, uh, over there, Yahshua Messiah says, War to you lawyers, you've taken away the keys. Right. There has to be a key, an overlay. Mm -hmm. In the old days, in the old days in the math book, they were called keys. Mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at the top of your page oh, yes. was your oh, key. Oh, oh, and then everything else, on that, everything else on that page was going to follow that key. If you could figure out that two plus... Something, 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 go back up to your key. 
And as it got harder and harder, you <laughs> depended more and more on that key. That's right. So here is your key, the tabernacle pattern. It is threefold. Mm -hmm. Why is it threefold? Because your test exam mm -hmm. is to understand that these three mm -hmm. are one. So your key mm -hmm. is going to tell you the ultimate test. Mm -hmm. These three are one. And the hoodahs tells you mm -hmm. and who it is. Who? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who did all of this? Who did all of this? So it's threefold, representing the Father, the Word, the uh, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You come out here, this is the outer court, open to the elements. Mm -hmm. As the vessel said, there had to be some burning going on. Out here, you got this altar. Mm -hmm. When Yahweh brought them out here, he married them. He thundered mm -hmm. down a law. Yeah. Three times Israel. <laughs> three times, you know, and what, what makes it so funny is... In life, that can happen to somebody. Somebody take two or three, they go down to the courthouse and get married. Mm. But then they decide a little bit later on, you know, grandmama say, well, I didn't witness it. I'll just say, <laughs> well, I didn't. Then what do they do? Then they have a reception. They might even go through the ceremony again. Mm -hmm. And I said, I do twice. The Israel got you beat. The Israel said three, <laughs> three times. times. All that Yahweh has said, we mm -hmm. will do. So he gave them a law. Mm -hmm. And a way out because he knew they couldn't keep it because the only one that could keep it is the one whose, whose steps were ordered mm -hmm. because it testified of him. Mm -hmm. and then somebody asked me one day, well, how did, how did, he, how did the Savior fulfill uh, uh, fornication? I said, by not doing it. <laughs> by not doing it. You know? <laughs> That uh, Mary and Martha wasn't no slouches. There was some pretty women mm -hmm. <laughs> that Yahshua was around. Mm -hmm. And what? He kept, kept himself. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, uh, Saul talks about the different eunuchs. Right, eunuchs right. made by man. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, uh, and then born he was a one mm -hmm. born yeah. a eunuch. Mm -hmm. And then the third one was mm -hmm. a eunuch mm -hmm. for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. say. Right. 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 So that's right. what Yahshua right. the Messiah was. Well, mm -hmm. Why he fulfilled stealing? He did not he steal. steal. <laughs> he did not steal. And we, know, first of all, it wasn't given to us in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I'll just say we collectively, trying to keep somebody else's mm -hmm. commandments, mm -hmm. could not do it. All of this is to show us, just like a, just like a child measuring up to his father. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially when they start getting up, head, mm -hmm. head right. almost up. You know, because I saw my brother doing that. I was wondering, what in the heck is he doing? He was measuring. He was measuring off. And thought he had got to the point. And my stepfather was shaving and he just, he put the, some kind of way that hand just, it wasn't even like his softball hand. It was just a backhand. Took him out the bathroom, <laughs> through the hallway, <laughs> and up the stairs. <laughs> put his razor. Did never said a mumbling word. My brother went in there went to jump it on all the nieces and nephews. <laughs> <laughs> you can't measure up. This is to show that's that this yeah. is that backhand. Yeah. Yeah. This is that backhand. You can measure up to it. So who is the man mm -hmm. that can measure up to it? Mm -hmm. So he gave him an out. The the wages of sin is death. Something <laughs> had to die. die so that your life would be preserved. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was a constant burning here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you come up above that, you got a brazen labor. This That's was right. brass. This is brass. Mm -hmm. You got a brazen labor with water in it. The sacrifice that's going to be killed mm -hmm. uh, is washed. Well, sacrifice that's going to be burned is killed. Mm -hmm. He's washed here mm -hmm. in the labor. And then you come over and you got a cup of holy anointing oil. Mm -hmm. Well, what is all of this? How does this tie up with this? And how is it talking about the Savior? You got the four horns on mm -hmm. this altar where mm -hmm. they put blood. they put blood. Mm -hmm. So it's one, two, three, four horns, mm -hmm. bloody horns. Mm -hmm. He is the Savior. One, two, crown of thorns nailed in his feet. That mm -hmm. sounds like four all day long. Yes. Four. Mm -hmm. Four. Mm -hmm. You come back, you back it back up, because yeah. beginning that Moses, right. they put the blood on the top of the door, mm -hmm. two side posts, mm -hmm. and then yeah. in 22 in that, in that chapter it says, mm -hmm. and it was dipping from a basin. Mm -hmm. So that's your four, four points of blood. Mm -hmm. It's talking about him 
the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You come over here, you got the washing the sacrifice before it's put on the altar. That's right. Well then why did, I never could figure out on these charts and you know you sure. better not be figuring that the vessel say something out of order. You gotta come and a point of order and straighten out something. Mm -hmm. Why did it have John's mm -hmm. baptism of Yahshua on the same line as the Red Sea. Mm. Because 1 Corinthians said that they was baptized in the, in the cloud, cloud and, and in the sea. So you come over here. That's symbolic of John's baptism mm -hmm. in the River Jordan. Mm -hmm. And that's picking up that labor where that sacrifice mm -hmm. had to be washed before, before it was be put on that mm -hmm. to be offered up. So mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah is washed of John. And he's a priest. Mm -hmm. he's, he's functioning in the greater right. and more perfect tabernacle. Because mm -hmm. his daddy, his daddy mm -hmm. <laughs> was a priest. Was he a high priest? Well, he was a priest. Because, uh, I'll say that one, uh, because he is over here. Mm -hmm. We don't sometimes talk about this. Mm -hmm. Every time the priest went in there, he did not see an angel no. uh, at, the, at the altar of incense. Uh, no, this, no. Is re this is representing... Uh, uh, the vision. The uh, what is it? Zechariah. Zechariah yeah. went in there, what did he say, at the order of Abijah. 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 He's in there officiating. Right. Mm -hmm. And the angel appears to him, just like then the angel mm -hmm. have to appear mm -hmm. to Miriam mm -hmm. and right. Joseph talking right. about a phenomenal birth. Yes. So then on the other end, too. that's his cousin. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a phenomenal birth. The angel appears to him and says, you're going to have a, a son. son. Elizabeth right. and always you're going to have a son. Right. And then I take him back to, didn't, didn't Yahweh and his two partners have to roll up on Abraham yeah. and say that Sarah was oh, going to have right. a child yes. in her old age? Right. So you got Elizabeth mm -hmm. having Mm. Going to have John the Baptist. So this is that angel mm -hmm. that appeared to his father there, there, there then. So he couldn't run out and say nothing. It struck him dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that struck him dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so he was baptized by someone who would have, by birth, been a priest. That's the whole point. He, was, he didn't just want some, he, his cousin even, was of the Levitical priesthood line. So you got him being baptized. That's what this represents. Mm -hmm. And then you got a cup of holy anointing oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go over here. They were mm -hmm. blood, water, and that was a baptism. Mm -hmm. Now what should be looking for? The cup of holy spirit. anointing oil mm -hmm. represents spirit. Mm -hmm. right. There was a cloud that led them. Pillar right. of cloud by the cloud just didn't appear here. The cloud mm -hmm. appeared down here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It was a pillar cloud by day, pillar fire by night. Mm -hmm. And then we said that the cloud represents spirit. Yahweh got this thing tight. You ain't got to look like this to try to <laughs> get an optical illusion on Yahweh. Mm -hmm. He said, don't, don't you fool around and provoke him, not my angel, mm -hmm. is yes, in that me. cloud. That's right. And then you read how that, that cloud that led them, mm -hmm. went behind mm -hmm. them. When Pharaoh got tightened back up, right. that cloud that led them went behind mm -hmm. them and divided mm -hmm. between right. Israel mm -hmm. and the Egyptians. And they say, and Yahweh looked out that cloud. Mm -hmm. well, what, what form would he look out? Elohim. He got to be in as Elohim, mm -hmm. that angelic host. Mm -hmm. And then discomforted mm -hmm. uh, Pharaoh and his host and held him up until his mm -hmm. son might go on through that that uh, Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So blood, water, spirit. Mm -hmm. With Yahshua the Messiah, you got to see the self-same mm -hmm. thing. Uh, John later mm -hmm. describes him as the Lamb uh, to take, come to take away the sins. Right. But that was the Lamb that right. come to right. take right. away the sins when he came there to John. But right. John didn't know it at that point. Right. John down there like Mission Impossible, just waiting and waiting for the sign to come. And when the sign comes, mm -hmm. then that is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. John, your job, Mr. Mm -hmm. Phelps, has now been fulfilled. <laughs> right. So the Lamb, <coughs> blood, mm -hmm. baptized in water, mm -hmm. the heavens open up, right. and the Spirit descends yeah. in the form of a dove. Right. The Spirit, mm -hmm. sound like blood, water, the Spirit, spirit to me. Yes. And then if you need some more Spirit, it said that Yahshua was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Yes, right. right. What? How were they led? That Not cloud spirit, that yeah. went behind them, as the vessel said, that cloud, this, one of the things says that cloud that followed them. No, no they had to be led, led of the spirit. Mm -hmm. He was led of the spirit into the wilderness. 
So that's that cup of holy anointing oil. And this will be tomorrow. Well, and that's all the Bible. But look, this got me. Because you can't get away from this. Something had to die in order for Israel to be saved. Something has to die. In order for us to have life, Hallelujah. I saw the midwives. The woman, would, I thought she had. I thought because see, some of them are hungry and stuff. I thought she had taken a a bun or something from the little the little knickknack tables that they had and had put it. You know, because I was half watching, so I thought she had took a piece of cake or something and put it in her napkin. And she in the in the examining room down here, and I saw it was something dark, you know, and she eating in this dark, and you know, then the nurse comes in, and she says, oh, you got a little snack, I see you got some, you got some little, uh, is it some little chocolate, and when she touched her, it, it was gritty, and the woman said, no, she, what she was, she had a, in her last part of pregnancy, her craving was cold. Oh, she's a seeker. Yeah. yeah, so C-O-A-L, cold rocks. Yeah. So the point is, they said, well, let's talk about this. Why? Because we don't eat rocks. That's the whole point I'm getting to. Right. Like, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> salt is a mineral, mm -hmm. and we use it sparingly, but we mm -hmm. just don't put a whole thing of salt in and just eat it. The whole point is, something had to die. die. The chicken was alive. The chicken's egg would have become an embryo. Mm -hmm. If you alive, let it stay right like I can no, let the no. egg stay. Mm -hmm. And it go bad, mm -hmm. showing you that it is alive. The mm -hmm. corn, it was alive. Mm -hmm. Everything, the wheat, it was alive. Mm -hmm. Everything gives up its life. Mm -hmm. And it's burnt upon our altar. And our altar is in a square configuration, mm -hmm. just like this altar, square configuration. You've mm -hmm. got to ascend it. Transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon. Wow. Yahweh know he got this type. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he's got colonic arteries that come in on each of those four colons. If it's four colons, Major. it's four mm -hmm. arteries, colonic arteries that come in. That gives you one, two, three, four yeah. groupings of blood mm -hmm. in your intestinal tract. The right. same way as you got those four horns here. You got the four points of blood on the door. You got Yahshua the Messiah with the mm -hmm. four points. Mm -hmm. He said it testifies oh, of me. me. So you can his testimony in your mm -hmm. body. He's yeah, saying I am a living <laughs> testimony. We don't know what we testify of. Our kidneys. Yes. We have them drawn together to show the same kind of configuration as the brazen labor. Mm -hmm. Now this tickles me. It's tight. Yes. <laughs> when they wash the sacrifice in there, blood will be in there and also stones and pebbles yes, would be in stone. there. Yeah. From so period yeah, from the animals. So periodically didn't they have to clean yeah, this? Because yeah. the priest would have to wash in it also. Right, right. So Changed and it had water. a spigot yeah. that the water came out of. Mm -hmm. So you got a bra brass vessel mm -hmm. and also possibility of stones. So you come over to us. Mm -hmm. If you put water mm -hmm. in a brass vessel, now here's where we go. Uh 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 uh. Yes, it is. <coughs> Because if you get the old cheap, I'm fine, if you get the old cheap cup and it's brass, mm -hmm. <coughs> you put the water in it, it's going to turn brass. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why the good cup that you can drink out of silver. is silver lined mm -hmm. and the water won't change mm -hmm. color. Right. But it's showing you, put the water in a brass vessel, mm -hmm. it's going to turn yellow. Mm -hmm. So is there any one that you could drink water, 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 and your urine is still going to be yellow, yellow, yellow. It yellow. might it's get lighter and lighter and lighter, but it's still yellow. going to be yellow, mm -hmm. showing you that that's a bra it's picking up that brass vessel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as Dr. Harris, who's <coughs> a licensed medical doctor, he said, it's always a trace of blood uh -huh. in the urine that comes out. Mm -hmm. What they measure is, he said, it just should be just scant, just mm -hmm. barely measurable. Right. But as it starts getting the increase, see, then they know it's that's something problem. that's right. going wrong. So you got the water with some blood in it and our kidneys mm -hmm. filter right. our blood mm -hmm. and send the impurities. And the kidneys drawn together show the uh, labor and the bladder 
the ureters coming down mm -hmm. would be like the stem, mm -hmm. and then the bladder is like the footstool mm -hmm. of the basin. And that's what keeps ours. And we don't go and say, well, excuse me, uh, I, I need to uh, void, and then just tip our head no. and void that way. We wow. got a, spence, a spencer, mm -hmm. a sphincter, sphincter. Mm -hmm. that holds it until what? It opens and we can release it the same way the water medicine hall and tip over the labor. Right, right. They had a, a spigot on it and they let right, it out. Right. And the kidneys are separated by five centimeters. I, I want to drop the mic yeah. on that one. When they read in the Zondervan Bible how that Israel went through the divided waters of the Red Sea mm -hmm. harnessed. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why you got to have all them different references. Mm -hmm. In the Zondervan, see, we thought harness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like the horse. Yeah, sorry. like the horse. No, no, no. You know. no. uh, and then the other one says they went through arm. Yeah. Yahweh said, I didn't take you by the way of the Philistines right. unless you see war and turn back. So right. if he took them through that arm like a military, they'd have been ready to go. So right. that ain't the right translation. Right. Uh, the harnessed is meant five abreast, meant that they were regimented mm -hmm. in how they went through it. They mm -hmm. went through five abreast. Your kidneys are separated by five centimeters. And on top of your <laughs> kidneys, mm -hmm. you have the inverted adrenal gland and Graves Anatomy, not the one on TV, the original Graves Anatomy, <laughs> says they look like inverted cuts. Cup of holy anointing oil, the inverted cups. And that, we used to say, secretes adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm saying it like we used to say, because after a point in time, you didn't hear it no more. But uh, it's a quickening. The adrenaline is, is a quickening. It's fight or flight. That's right. And it's instantaneously, it goes through the whole body. We've heard incidences where a woman is able to lift a car off of her child in that flash, that adrenaline, she gets that super strength. Uh, now, she's not going to be a super weightlifter from then on, mm -hmm. just right. be out there competing, mm -hmm. lifting cars. Yes. It was a one-time yes. deal yes. by that adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And then we also talk about it's a quickening, uh, and that sometimes when they would be trying to revive the heart, they would shoot the needle. Now, the point is, See, that's why Yahweh have trained doctors among us. And they said, the, ter the reason you're not hearing them call for adrenaline is they use it as chemical term, is epinephrine. That's what they call But look, when we hear epinephrine, we might, adrenaline, that's what it is. And they shoot that into the heart to what? Try to quicken it back. So that cup of holy anointing or representing that quickening. Going throughout our whole body. Mm -hmm. Did not they have to take that cup mm -hmm. and Aaron and Moses? Well, Moses had to go in there and anoint all the vessels of the yep. tabernacle yep. before uh, he could go in mm -hmm. and officiate. And that cloud set upon it, as you read that in the last chapter of, of Exodus. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got a door here, and the door was three feet. Mm -hmm. You come over here, you got a door. Because you have a diaphragm right. that sways with the breeze, every breath, mm -hmm. the diaphragm. Your lungs don't have a muscle. That tickle me. <laughs> it does not have no. a muscle. It's the diaphragm, diaphragm. changing the pressure mm -hmm. in the cavity mm -hmm. that when it goes down, it gives it more space and the lungs then mm -hmm. can expand and draw in. Mm -hmm. And then when the diaphragm pushes it back up, mm -hmm. it, see... Pushes it, mm -hmm. pushes it all back out. Why? Because it's, it's condensing that space back down. So this sways in the breeze, just like that tent door swayed mm -hmm. in the breeze. Mm -hmm. Three feet, you got three openings coming across that diaphragm. You got to have an opening for the arterial system to go down. Mm -hmm. Look, we don't go and get transfused. You got to have mm -hmm. an opening for the venal system mm -hmm. to bring the blood back up. Mm -hmm. And then you got to have an opening for the esophagus to go down because the stomach is on the other side mm -hmm. of the diaphragm. It's mm -hmm. out here in the court roundabout. Mm -hmm. So they went through. Yahweh, <laughs> Yahweh made a way. He heaped up mm -hmm. the Red Sea. That was a door yeah. that, they, that they came through. Okay, you come over here, you got the lab stand. The vessel talked about the seven daughters of Jeffrey Rell. Got the lab stand with the seven 
uh, branches to it and they put the oil in the middle prong and it went out through the, the, the other seven. If it testifies of Yahshua, mm -hmm. just think of everything I'm saying, just think about well, how does it testify of him? Right. Here he comes in, in the 4,000th year, mm -hmm. Yahshua is able mm -hmm. to go all the way back to Adam. Mm -hmm. If salvation is going to be accomplished, it's going to be accomplished in the one Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He got all mm -hmm. of those on this side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you got the branches coming on this side. Mm -hmm. He's got even yet the unborn generations, mm -hmm. those that have not yet been manifested mm -hmm. in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He got them covered with this one death bell mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. resurrection and outpouring of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So he is that. And then you're talking about, I ain't sure. Okay, old John over there on the Isle of Patmos said, I saw one standing mm -hmm. in the midst of the seven branches, golden mm -hmm. lamb standing. Mm -hmm. Who was it? Yahshua mm -hmm. the Messiah, ancient of days, mm -hmm. standing there showing you I'm the Alpha. And I'm the Omega. I'm the whole brass band. I got it wrapped up. Salvation is accomplished only in me. Mm -hmm. So when you get here, this is the holy place. Mm -hmm. now, I like the way a vessel said years ago, every time you hit the holy place, that's, that's your mark. That's your cue. Mm -hmm. You're in the holy place. You got to have uh, light, bread, bread and intercessor. Mm -hmm. And the light comes from the seven branch uh, lampstand. So when Moses fled out here, how many daughters did Jephro seven. have? Four? Seven. 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 Why? Because the seven lambs stand and the daughter is the light of a father's mm -hmm. heart or the father's eye. That's just, I'm just throwing that in. <laughs> okay? Seven. Seven. So you come out here when the children of Israel came out. Well, where are you picking up? Light bread, mm -hmm. intercessor. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there a cloud, a pillar cloud by day? Uh, a pillar fire by night. night? So Israel was always in what? Light. Light. Mm -hmm. Light. Light. Mm -hmm. So then light. you come over mm -hmm. to the physical body that the life or the light of the body mm -hmm. is in the blood. Mm -hmm. So you got that, and it's in that oxygenated blood yes, coming yeah. up off of that aorta. So you got right. that great aortic mm -hmm. arch. Mm -hmm. You got seven branches coming off, just like you have the uh, oh, seven branch lampstand. And I'm going to put it like this because, see, we say stuff a whole lot till you get an anatomy and really look at it. One of them, <laughs> one of them is called the anonymous, which nowadays they have named it the brachiocephalic. So, anonymous means unnamed or unknown. It's talking about Yahshua. Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He said, let another come in his own, own name. name. Yeah. Him you will receive. But you won't receive me. <laughs> Even you won't re I receive not honor among mm -hmm. men. That's right. So what is unknown or unnamed. So right. you got that anonymous. Mm -hmm. And then in the fullness of time, they named it Brachio Cephalic. Brachio arm Cephalic Brain. Why? I brought down salvation with my own right arm. And I looked around and there was nothing to help. <laughs> there can't be another one. It wasn't because uh, there was a thief and a robber. They ain't bring no rock, no salvation. Yahshua went the Messiah. Why? Because he was alone and by himself from way back there in the realm of eternity. And I'm going to surrender the floor and let another vessel have something to say. It's just an honor. Yes. And the vessel say, this is the cue. This is the key. This is the key. Talking about Yahshua the Messiah. And all these things I praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time I like calling Dr. Daphne Thomas. Good afternoon, player. Good afternoon. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. Boy, the two vessels, which I mean, they were getting it. They were taken up by Yahweh. I tell you, it's a beautiful sight when you see that. Because you know this is a spiritual thing. It's hard to get two people to agree on anything. <laughs> and then to get up here and have them sing the same song about something spiritual. Mm -hmm. And a pass the baton like that. I mean, really, that was a relay race. She popped it right in her hand. She started right where she left off. And I'm going to try to do the same thing. She was talking about this um, tabernacle pattern. Get over there in Luke where it says, uh, Woe unto you lawyers. Because she, she talked about how when we were growing up till our age, <laughs> and when we were uh, in school, how you would have that key up at the top 
of your page to explain because all mm -hmm. that stuff was almost like in code mm -hmm. and that key was to unlock the code beneath and you wouldn't be able to complete the problem without the key okay so it, it was uh almost like a mystery and without that key uh, that there's no way, and you know, like she says, especially as it got more difficult, you can look at maps. They call them legends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's still a key. Mm -hmm. Ma you know, maps have so many symbols because there's no really not a lot of room to write a lot of words. Right. So they have symbols, little triangles, a little this, a little that, a red line, you know, blue line. You got longitude, latitude, and all these things driven written on the map. And down there at the bottom, you just have that little legend. So it could, you could translate what all those symbols mean. That was your key to understand what you were looking at. Same thing. Let's get Luke. Luke 11, 52. Uh-huh. Woe unto you, Lord, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Now, that's, this is what the previous vessel was laboring with. The key of knowledge is this tabernacle pattern. And, th and Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, who was Yahshua in a body, I dare say, brought <laughs> us this. Mm -hmm. And this is what differentiates us to this day from the world. Now they try to mess with it, but they don't. They don't get all off in there and the vessels and the different compartments and they, you know, they they they'll build one, but they they can't get all off in it and show you how the trick of the children of Israel is going by a pattern. How your body goes according to the pattern, not just only how it is made, you know, and anatomy and physiology. Anatomy is the the form. And the function, physiology of the physical body, right? Mm -hmm. So we, you know, it's not only how it's made, but how it operates right. and how it functions goes according to this threefold tabernacle pattern. Ain't nobody telling y'all that mm -mm. <laughs> to this day. Mm -mm. And they sure wasn't talking about it when I came in class in the nineties. This was, this was, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Okay, for them to tell me how I was made in the likeness and image of my creator, I heard that before mm -hmm. I came down mm -hmm. here. I had. Mm -hmm. But nobody told me how, mm -hmm. ever, mm -hmm. until I came down here, but they had the key. See, y'all yeah. gave mm -hmm. this little bitty school, mm -hmm. this little bitty people, he did with a lot of folks back here, he's going right. to according to a pattern. Mm -hmm. He overturns and overturns. He said, I overturn it. Mm -hmm. So he dealt with, he chose a group of people in this world and gave them the key. Because over there, Luke, he's, he's, he's uh, admonishing and woe unto you lawyers. Mm -hmm. For you have taken away the key of knowledge. Read the rest of that. Ye enter not in your cell. Now they know what it is. Mm -hmm. They remember the previous vessel talking about the phylacteries and all on the hem of their garments and all this stuff. They studied the scriptures. Right, right. That's why they're called lawyers. Because what's in the scriptures? The law. Mm -hmm. And that's what they studied. And that's what they had pinned all on them. Okay, so woe unto you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge, read. Ye enter not in yourselves, mm -hmm. and them that were entering in, ye hindered. Ye hindered. Oh my goodness. So yeah, but it was just for an appointed time. For y'all would give this man a divine vision and revelation, he was saved in it. <laughs> yeah, held yeah. over. Just like that lamb was held over for four days mm -hmm. and examined. Mm -hmm. He held this over for this time, for we are now in the what? Kingdom age. Isn't that right? Present, mm -hmm. Present kingdom mm -hmm. age. Spiritual kingdom on earth. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to understand, even have a hope of understanding what that is, you got to have the key. Previous vessel stopped off right here at this seven branch lampstand. Talking about that seven branch aortic arch that sends oxygenated blood. Mm -hmm. It pumps us, you know, your, your heart is a muscle. Right. It's just a pump. That's all it is. <laughs> Your circulatory system is a closed system and it has a pump. Mm -hmm. And it pushes that blood. It gets that, um, it says that uh, deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the heart. And it goes out that seven branch aortic mm -hmm. arch. And it goes out to the body to bring life or light to every tissue, mm -hmm. every cell. In your body. I mean, we used to have folks come down here and, and draw what red blood cells look like and how they function mm -hmm. and how that testifies to one Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But those oxygenated uh, blood cells mm -hmm. are pumped through this aortic arch. And it's, it's amazing. You know, they do a heart transplants. But you know, they only transplant the lower portion. Right, right. Because right. see, that upper portion, mm -hmm. that's where all the 
electronics, right. the divine electricity right. goes on. Mm -hmm. They can't duplicate that. They right. still don't know how to do mm -hmm. that. Okay? Right. So they just give you those lower <laughs> chambers. Why? Because mm -hmm. up there you got an SA node mm -hmm. and an AV node. Mm -hmm. And you put them together, that's what to say. Mm -hmm. Talking about who? Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Like a battery. Yeah. Uh, okay? Uh -huh. You got a, a one thing. Yeah, negative and a positive. And it, man cannot get in there and get that wiring right. So they leave you that alone. Okay, it's still pointing to who? Yahshua, the Messiah. Oh, they say, you, she said, you got to have light, you got to have bread, and you got to have intercession. So you look at the table of showbread. It's a square like gold table with 12 loaves of bread on it, six and six. That's where the high priest, because, you know, this is an all-day job here, mm -hmm. okay? So he had to get something to eat, okay? So he got his sustenance, or his bread, mm -hmm. from that table of showbread. And over here in the uh, holy place, what did Yahweh rain down mm -hmm. to them? It's pretty mm -hmm. necessary to rain down now. And it was coriander seed, but mm -hmm. when they ground it into what? Flour. Mm -hmm. And they made and baked mm -hmm. it, and they made a bread. Mm -hmm. They made a loaf. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it became, you know, oh, this old man. <laughs> They got to eat, they had to have their what? Daily bread. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and on that sixth day, they got a double portion because right. the seventh day was a day of rest. Is that not right? right? So over here, this is pointing to the holy place where they, uh, rain, Yahweh rained down manna. So you're going to have a show of bread right here. They called it what? Show bread. Isn't that right? Yeah. And he ate that. And it was 12 <laughs> loaves. And how many pints of blood does. In a typical body, mm -hmm. it's 12 pints. Mm -hmm. Being remember that closed circulatory mm -hmm. system, that heart is that pump, mm -hmm. it's pumping it constantly. It can't, y'all, you don't want it to pool it. Right. Okay? Right. It's always on the move. Mm -hmm. So, 12 pints of blood is circulating in a normal human body, mm -hmm. pointing to those 12 loaves of bread, mm -hmm. bringing sustenance to your to your tissues, and mm -hmm. it's got to keep moving, all right? Mm -hmm. And this was our a round table. Mm. It had <laughs> four corners, right. and it even had a golden crown. See, that seems superfluous mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Why you got to go through all this trouble and making it all decorative mm -hmm. them to put? Gold. They ain't doing right. nothing holding bread. Right. You don't need that. <laughs> Why? Because that golden crown mm -hmm. points to your heart, where you have a golden fatty, a layer of fatty mm -hmm. tissue going right. around, the casing the heart, mm -hmm. and that's called your corona, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. yellow and fatty. Mm -hmm. Well, what is crown? Crown mm -hmm. means what? Corona. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a golden crown around this mm -hmm. because this table of showbread is pointing to the heart. Mm -hmm. It has to be square in configuration. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's pointing to the four chambers of your mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. And that right? There are animals in the animal kingdom that don't have four chambers. Right. Amphibians right. have three. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the man is pointing right. to who? Mm -hmm. The man. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have four chambers. So this table has to have four corners. It right. can't be round. Then that's your bread. Then you go to the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. And this is pointed to intercession. Mm -hmm. This is where the high priest would burn incense. a specially mm -hmm. formulated incense on this altar. And only he knew the formula. Right. Is that right? We knew the primary ingredients, mm -hmm. but he only knew the proportions mm -hmm. right. or the so-called recipe. Right. Okay, and it was stacker, onaka, galbanum, and frankincense. Four primary ingredients to this incense mm -hmm. that he burned and wafted up into the most holy place into the nostrils of Yahweh. Why? Because there was a stench out here, constant burning. Don't you have a stench down here? Mm -hmm. There's a constant burning mm -hmm. going on, okay? So this is your pointing to Yahshua Messiah as the one and only true intercessor mm -hmm. between man and who? Mm -hmm. Yahweh. No man gets to the Father, what? Mm -hmm. But by mm -hmm. me. That right. sounds like an intercessor. Mm -hmm. Now you go over, it points to your lungs. Mm -hmm. The previous verse told you how that diaphragm, it's like bellows effect. You mm -hmm. know what bellows are? Yeah, you yeah, do them yeah, like that yeah. to pump up that fire? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. That's what your diaphragm is doing. It's compressing and releasing, giving more space into the chest cavity mm -hmm. for the uh, lungs to what? Inflate. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you are taking on the breath of life. Right. That's that mighty Russian wind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Just that's pointing to what? The Holy Feel. Spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you got a mighty rushing wind right here in the midst of your chest cavity, on your lungs, which is pointing to the altar of 
Mm. of incense mm. pointed to intercession. Those four main ingredients that were burned there mm -hmm. that wafted up into the most holy place as mm -hmm. a sweet smelling savor. When you take in the breath of life, there is no tissue in your body more sensitive to oxygen mm -hmm. deprivation mm -hmm. than your brain, mm -hmm. which is in your most holy place. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can go what? Three weeks without food, Three days without water, but you better not go three minutes without air to that brain. Mm -hmm. And those cells start dying off precipitously. Mm -hmm. And they don't come back they because they don't back. regenerate. Mm -hmm. right, right. That's why brain diseases are degenerative. Mm -hmm. Because they don't regenerate. Mm -hmm. right? Right, right? So you got to have the right incense mm -hmm. coming up on this altar. Mm -hmm. Offer some strange incense mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Like carbon monoxide mm -hmm. versus carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. That that missing that one oh, oxygen. Oh. Makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the way you remember we talked about how the circulatory system sends a blood cell. A blood mm -hmm. cell is made like this, and it's got a little hollowed out thing mm -hmm. here. You want to know why? Because when you get that mighty rushing wind, mm -hmm. what those blood cells do, and they go in those little bitty capillaries mm -hmm. in the lungs, they line up, mm -hmm. and they get in line, and they get their little oxygen molecule. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and it takes it to your what? Your <laughs> tissues. Well, see, the problem with common monoxide point to that anti-messiah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does he do? Common monoxide yeah. takes that place. Mm. Where it ought not. Where it ought not. <laughs> That's how abomination and desolation to your body. Because yes. it's standing where it ought not. Instead of healthy, the right kind of oxygen, that monoxide gets in there. That carbon monoxide takes a seat mm -hmm. and it goes to your, to your tissues and you suffocate mm -hmm. to death. Yes. Now what happened when those uh, two low priests went in and offered up what strange fire? He killed, mm -hmm. he killed them dead and they had to get the flesh hooks and haul mm -hmm. them up out of there. So that's his point into intercession. Mm -hmm. This wafts up into your most holy place, which points to your what? Head cavity. Right. Isn't air made out of four primary mm -hmm. ingredients? Mm -hmm. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. What's the other one, y'all? I'm missing one. Because it's a formula. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that's, that's a trace. Because, see, there are trace elements, too, in, in the air. That's why, you know, if, if, if man could really reproduce air, he'd make you pay for it. Hello. But he don't know the formula <laughs> to air no more than the low priest knew the formula to that right. incense. The, right. Because they knew what was in it, but they didn't they know, know quite exactly. the proportion. They couldn't reproduce that. Mm -hmm. That's why when somebody else offered it up, it was mm -hmm. what? Strange. Strange. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was carbon. I used to know this. Carbon dioxide. Yes. Nitrogen, O2. oxygen. I'm trying to find that. And O2. One. But it's a formula. Mm -hmm. And it's four primary uh, ingredients. They'll come to us. We'll look it up for you. But just like that's offered up on your altar with every breath. It's wafting up into your most holy place. In the most holy place, you had the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. It was a three-in-one configuration, beaten work of gold. Mm -hmm. And it was a chest with two angels. It represented the archangels Michael mm -hmm. and Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And they are the wings are hovering over mm -hmm. the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Where Yahweh, that's Yahweh's throne, mm -hmm. that's his mm -hmm. seat. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't you have some sitting mm -hmm. <laughs> on your throne? You better mm -hmm. hope it's Yahshua the Messiah. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> if not, it's that other boy. Yeah. <laughs> Him. But somebody's sitting up there, okay? You got a throne too. That's right. Okay, now how does this point to your most holy place? In your brain. Your brain is three parts. It's a cerebrum, cerebellum, and a brain stem, which is called the medulla oblongata. It's amazing. When they showed how even embryos form, mm -hmm. that brain forms, and then you see that brain stem coming on right. down. Mm -hmm. They call it an autocord or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's coming mm -hmm. on down. Mm -hmm. And then those peripheral nerves mm -hmm. start coming mm -hmm. off of that. What does that point to? Mm -hmm. Point to who? Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Even over there, and I think in Revelation, it said a river of what? Clear living water mm -hmm. proceeding mm -hmm. out of the throne of Yahweh. Of Yahweh. Don't you, don't you know you have that? Mm -hmm. Coming out of your brain, you've got that spinal cord. And you know, folks really talked a lot about that when Superman yeah. uh, suffered mm -hmm. that spinal mm -hmm. injury. Mm -hmm. And it rendered him a quadriplegic. Mm -hmm. And he ended up dying from that injury. Mm -hmm. Why? 
because his he was cut off literally yeah, right, right. and the life force that that, that clear river mm -hmm. coming out of proceeding out of the most holy place was interrupted mm -hmm. and so were those nerves that go in give life and light right. to those tissues. It all works mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. But you have pure water coming out through your spinal cord. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of anybody getting a spinal tap? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do they do right. that? Mm -hmm. People have a, a brain inflammation mm -hmm. and they're trying to determine what's causing it because there's obviously an infection. Mm -hmm. there. They spike a really high fever really quick and they have a, a, a other symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, symptoms, you got signs and you got symptoms. Mm -hmm. So when they go and tap that spinal cord, right. they're going to take a little sample of that clear water because mm -hmm. ain't nothing supposed to be in there. Mm -hmm. right. Why? Because that's a closed mm -hmm. system. That's right. what makes mm -hmm. it pure. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. when there's disease or mm -hmm. disease right. there, they go and they tap it. They mm -hmm. just put the little lumbar puncture mm -hmm. and they get a sample and they look at it and that's going to tell them what's in that river that ain't supposed to be yeah. there. Because it's coming all the way from the most holy place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's those are serious illnesses. Right. They can kill you in about 48 hours. You get an infection up in there. Mm -hmm. They call it what? Meningitis. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Encephalitis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your most holy place. Now your brain has two functions. Sensory and mm -hmm. motor. Mm -hmm. Pointing to those two archangels. Because you know, why are they there? That mm -hmm. seems superfluous. Mm -hmm. But see, this is all pointing to the fact that you are a tent, mm -hmm. a living tent <laughs> yeah. or a living temple reared up for the inhabitation of Yahshua mm -hmm. the Messiah. It's all to show you where he dwells. Because, you know, that is a mystery. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody ever want to put Yahshua in a body. Mm -hmm. We'll put the devil in a body in a, in a, in a minute, but nobody said, you just Full of Yahshua. Don't nobody ever say that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and all of this is to prove that that is where he must will for salvation mm -hmm. to occur. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. Then he does, it does no good for him to stay here. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. why he had to say what? I am what? Come, Come down. down. Mm -hmm. To what? Say. Mm -hmm. To deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay? So deliverance, he has to get in you. And your tent has to point up to his very nature in this state. Mm -hmm. So everything, the anatomy, the physiology, the form and the function goes according to the key. Mm -hmm. So now over in this Ark of the Covenant, in it they put a pot of manna, they put Aaron's rod that budded, because you know it budded and bred almonds to show that he was fruitful, all right, like the first fruits. And then it put uh, the Mosaic law in there, the Ten Commandment law. Why did they put that in there? Now remember that back there wasn't no Cedar Sinai Hospital where right. they were doing autopsies. <laughs> they didn't know what was up in here. <laughs> they did. Okay? But they put that there. Well, let's look at your brain and let's see if it lines up. Now you, you said the brain operates motory and sensual. Right. So in other words, I'm moving. That's coming straight from my most holy place. It ain't coming from anywhere else. That's where the command is coming from. And I can feel I can feel this stick in my hand. Why? Because my brain has nerves that are proceeding out from the most holy, holy place and coming off that uh, spinal cord. And there's six to three of them. And the one at the very end at the tail is called terminal uh, phylum terminale, which means what? End of the line. So you've got 32 <laughs> pairs, 32 times 2. Two and that one is 31 pair times 2 mm -hmm. is 62 mm -hmm. and that last tail. little thread mm -hmm. that tail that phylum mm -hmm. terminale mm -hmm. makes 63. Right. Well, how many generations from Adam is Yahshua? He's the sister third mm -hmm. generation from Adam and he was cut off what? Without, Without a successor to follow. That's Alabama. right. You got that one little fi uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nerd that comes down by and then hey Yahweh named it. Mm -hmm. Phylum terminale. Mm -hmm. End of the line is cut off. Mm -hmm. They ain't got no path. Mm -hmm. Because he said, I was alone and what? By myself. By myself and there was none, none to help. None to say. None to say. So, mm -hmm. Okay, just everything mm -hmm. testifying to what? You mm -hmm. want Yahshua the Messiah, his mm -hmm. purpose, his pattern, mm -hmm. his plan of what? Salvation. Salvation. Mm -hmm. Now, in your brain, 
it's this I so I sat here for years and you know how you got a question you you too scared to ask mm -hmm. why they got law written in mm -hmm. inside the mouth. Mm -hmm. Well up in the roof of your mouth you have a, a, a chest like bony compartment right. called a stella tersica. And inside of it mm -hmm. is your pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. That's called the master gland mm -hmm. of the body. It secretes ten hormones. Mm -hmm. It governs how tall you are mm -hmm. to this very day. Mm -hmm. It governs Oh, we were talking about birth, childbirth. It really gets to going in and childbirth. Oh, yeah, it's where that oxytocin is released. And it's causing those contractual, uh, those contraction pains. And that squeeze in that uterus and telling that baby he's got to go. His abode is no more. That, is, that will no longer be his home. Because he would leave if he were not, what, thrust out. And that comes from way up. Right. And you talking about something that's going on in the lower parts of the body. Mm -hmm. It comes from the most holy place. And it comes from that pituitary gland mm -hmm. that's in your stella tersica mm -hmm. that's running every piece of metabolic process mm -hmm. in your body. Mm -hmm. Even what color your skin right. is, your genetic code, all right. of that. Mm -hmm. It's the master gland because you have tons of glands. Mm -hmm. You have a thyroid gland. Right. You have adrenal gland. We right. talked about that. Right. It's called endocrine. In the uh, chronology, mm -hmm. all right, the study of the glands. So right. you have a glandular system, but the pituitary is the master gland mm -hmm. because it secretes ten hormones that rule and govern the body, and it's right there in your most holy, holy place, right. pointing to the Ten Commandment law that was mm -hmm. placed mm -hmm. in the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And the thing is, it's right over the roof of your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's why Yahweh had him write mm -hmm. the law mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there. Doctor Harris did this chart, right? And Yahweh gave him that vision of how mm -hmm. the key mm -hmm. and the body, he sent him to medical school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long before he introduced himself. Mm -hmm. And he put the law right there to show you that that law is mm -hmm. manifested in mm -hmm. your most holy place just like it was placed here in this chest. You got mm -hmm. a law in your chest and mm -hmm. your head. Mm -hmm. Ain't that a beautiful mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see this uh, eye right here, the Shekinah mm -hmm. or Shekinah, mm -hmm. that flash mm -hmm. that they would see right. on the Day of Atonement. Right. You got a pineal gland right here. Mm -hmm. And is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they talk about that so a lot. It's new do. wave um, mm -hmm. um, religions. Mm -hmm. They talk about that that third eye. Yeah. So yeah. Speak. Yeah. That's why Prince had those sunglasses with the, uh, mm -hmm. a, a shade right there, too. I'm like, that looks so weird. He was covering up his what? Third eye. Mm -hmm. but that's going to the pineal gland. Oh, yeah. And it is sensitive it's to light. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you start to get some disruptions in your circadian rhythms. The pineal gland, people who work at night and mm -hmm. sleep during the day, mm -hmm. they don't get exposure to light the way they should. Mm -hmm. It messes up all their sleep patterns. Mm -hmm. That's pointing to that flash mm -hmm. of the shaking eye that you can see on the day of okay. atonement. Right here, between the two cherubims, mm -hmm. hovering above the mercy seat. And so you've got a pineal gland. They didn't really understand it for a long, long, long right. time. It was a mystery. But it's all pointed to your most holy place in your brain and how it operates. That medulla oblongata mm -hmm. points to Aaron's rod that what? Mm -hmm. Bud it. Because mm -hmm. that when you look at that baby, that nautical card, you, and they show mm -hmm. how it's just mm -hmm. forming, it's mm -hmm. proceeding out of I'm the most holy place right. and how those nerves start as right. those arms. <laughs> Sending life. Mm -hmm. How do how you think I'm able to do this? Those are those those 31 pairs of peripheral nerves that are coming from way up here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? That's what happened to Superman. <laughs> Y'all went to, to prove the point, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Ooh, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I hope something was said to edify the body and all praises go to Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 lecture for today. Let us stand for the doxology. The doxology is taken from Jude, verse 24-25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, 
Hallelujah. 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 And the fourth one is hydrogen. Hydrogen. <laughs> I couldn't think it.